Good evening. Welcome to St. John this evening. We're going to recognize the Feast of the Visitation, which actually falls on July 2nd, which was Sunday, but I transferred it to this evening, so we can call it uh, Christmas in July. We had Christmas in June, right, with the Nativity of St. John, so now more um, keeping the whole season together. And since it's a feast day and we have an organist, I thought we could sing uh, a couple of hymns tonight, so, or three hymns. So let's sing a hymn of invocation, O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright, Hymn 395.
invite you to stand. Our order of service is Divine Service Setting 1, page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord. Savior. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you chose the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, and made known through her your gracious regard for the poor and lowly and despised. Grant that we may receive your word in humility and faith, and so be made one with Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the Feast of the Visitation is from Isaiah chapter 11. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or dis decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard 
the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The epistles from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. This is the word of the Lord. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant, for behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, O Christ. May be seated. We sing our hymn of the day from east to west, hymn 385. Enjoy the Church of Jesus Christ celebrates today the Feast of the Visitation of our Lord. St. Luke's Gospel records in chapter 1 the visit of Mary to her kinswoman, Elizabeth, when Mary was newly with child and Elizabeth was in her sixth month. It would be the first meeting of John the Baptist and the Lord to whom he would serve. From within the house, Elizabeth heard the greeting of her kinswoman, and a miracle happens. A child within her leaps for joy, and Elizabeth is herself filled with the Spirit and speaks as she greets Mary. Now, last week I suggested to you that the best way to resolve conflict was to have a, well, a church convention, if you like. I know Don's going to go to one of those. Maybe a few conflicts that need to be resolved there. But uh, conventions or what else might we call them? Conferences or councils, as they used to be called, aren't always for the purpose of trying to resolve a conflict like we had with St. Peter, St. Paul, the apostles, and then the apostle to the Gentiles. It's also good to have a council or a conference, or rather just gather together in congregation simply to confess the truth, to speak the truth to one another. And so we heard Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, she prophesied by the Spirit. She was filled with the Holy Spirit, which probably surprises us a bit. It's not the sort of preacher we would expect in the church. But the reason being is that there she was. Her son, who would be the preacher, was yet in her womb. 
and that who was present with her was conceived in the body of the Virgin Mary by the overshadowing of the Spirit on whom the Spirit of the Lord rested. So it's no surprise that Elizabeth would be filled with the Spirit since the Spirit proceeds from the Son and the Father and the Son, Jesus, is present in her midst. Of course, Elizabeth carries within her womb a fruit who even then was filled with the Holy Spirit himself and by impulse leaped in her womb. Full of the Spirit then, all of them, Mary, Elizabeth, John, and Jesus, and maybe even Zechariah off on the side, there was plenty to be exclaimed that day. Elizabeth sings her canticles. In just a few months, Zechariah will open his mouth and sing his, the Benedictus. Mary sings her Magnificat. And so we have, really, what I would suggest is the first convention of the New Testament church, even before Jesus himself is delivered. The most prominent persons and representatives of the whole Christian church were assembled. Present there were Mary, blessed among women, carrying in her the Son of God, Elizabeth, full of the Holy Spirit, the priest, Zechariah, unable to speak, but on whom we will soon hear that he will be filled with the Spirit. And then John, in his mother's womb, who affirmed the pronouncements of the assembly by jumping up and down in the womb for joy. And then there were some declarations. This always happens at a convention or a conference or a church council. We proclaim what is true. And these embody the foundation of our faith. Depending on how you want to number it, there's perhaps even six proclamations pronounced by the Spirit working by the voice of Elizabeth. In the first place, the assembly declared that Christ is true man, for he was called the fruit of Mary's body, the fruit of your womb. This was according to Psalm 132, of course, where the Messiah is called one who would come from David's own body, one of the sons of David's body. Mary being of the house and lineage of David. And so there is an error that is also refuted already at this first council. This declaration, by this declaration, the assembly condemned all who deny the true humanity of Jesus. And another was that Christ is true God. Elizabeth proclaimed, why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The Messiah is called the Lord from heaven. This declaration was according to the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23, Behold, the days are coming when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And this is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. Thereby, the assembly proclaimed the truth that he is true God and also condemned all the heretics who deny the true deity of Christ. Then there was a third declaration, and that was of Jesus Two natures, the divine and the human, united in one person, the person of Christ. For Mary is called, you'll note what Elizabeth said, the mother of my Lord, the mother of the Lord. There is not one person who is the son of God and another person who is the son of Mary, but there is only one who is both son of God and the same one is also the son of Mary in unity of person as we confess. Again, this pronouncement is not new. It's according to the prophet, again, Jeremiah. The Lord has created a new thing on earth. A woman protects a man. This man is Christ, the valiant hero, the, um, the man gotten by the help of the Lord, Genesis 4, who was born of the Virgin Mary because he received the human nature, which he took from the Virgin unto his person. By this personal union, the human nature was united to the divine nature. So that Christ was made Lord also according to his human nature, as St. Peter declares in Acts 2. So at this first church council, convention, conference, whatever you want to call it, all were condemned who abrogate or obscure the personal union of Jesus, true God and true man. Especially in mind will be a guy who will come along named Nestorius, who would not agree that Mary should be called Mother of God, Theotokos. Fourth declaration, 
the assembly declared that Christ is the blessed fruit of the body. For Mary was called blessed among women because she received the heavenly blessing and benediction. We too have been blessed in him and have all received fullness upon fullness, John 1. This declaration is according to Genesis 12. By you, that is by the offspring, Jesus, all the families of the earth will be, will be blessed. In the Messiah, all the families of the earth will be blessed, not just Mary, not just Elizabeth, but all of us. This declaration condemns all who seek elsewhere for heavenly blessing, for the grace of God and for life outside of Jesus. For Christ alone has redeemed us from the curse by becoming a curse for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. Galatians 3. But wait, there's more. A fifth declaration, pronouncement of the truth came by the Spirit through Elizabeth and given to us through faith, is that all the blessings of the Messiah are ours in faith. As Elizabeth says, blessed is she who believed that there would be, or that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. So Elizabeth said to Mary, by faith Mary conceived Christ. She received him in faith. So Christ is born in us in a spiritual manner, again, by faith. Faith makes us partakers of the heavenly blessing. Men of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham, Galatians 3. By faith, God's promises are fulfilled in us when faith lays hold on God and, and his word of promise. This declaration is in accordance with the word, Genesis 15. Abraham believed the Lord and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. So also for us. We have been reckoned righteous, having received Christ in faith, just like Mary. Therefore, are all are condemned who looked for other means other than faith to receive Christ and his blessings. And a sixth proclamation. The assembly agreed that it is the nature of true faith to appropriate personally the blessings offered in Christ. Again, the assembly agreed that it's the nature of true faith to personally appropriate the blessings offered in Jesus, the Christ. Elizabeth called Christ her Lord, and later Mary spoke of him as her Savior. My Lord and my God, said St. Thomas, John 20, and St. Paul, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, Galatians 6. This declaration of the first assembly here, the first church council or conference or convention, was based on the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious. And in answer, faith says, only in the Lord is righteousness and strength. Isaiah 45. So we have at this first church council or meeting or convention, long before the one in Acts 15 between Peter and Paul, we have the truth confessed of who Jesus is, both true God, true man, Two, uh, two, pers excuse me, two natures united in one person who is received alone by faith and who is for you and for me to be received in that faith and for our righteousness and blessing. Also then it's condemned those who teach that there are other ways of salvation or Jesus is not as he was confessed on that day and that one can receive Jesus apart from faith. Which would of course leave you in doubt of God's grace and forgiveness. So it's essential, and Don's going to take note when he goes to convention, to make sure that they lay out the fundamental truths before they argue about anything. <laughs> this is the key. Always define your terms. Establish what is true according to the Spirit and the Word. And only then can you have a basis to have an argument. Of course, behind the scenes and the whole scene, as St. Luke rightly records, is the Holy Spirit who alone can guide us in the way of truth, guide us to Jesus, bring us to faith, gather us to the church, renew us, and strengthen us again. So this con actually conference or convention, I think, was a pretty successful one. We had the whole church represented. We had priests and prophets. We had the Messiah, Jesus. We had the mother of our Lord, who represents the church, and of course, the mother of old, who looked forward to that church's coming. All gathered together together, in that fulcrum, that pivot point, where both old and new are made one now in the church. 
And so it is that St. Augustine will later say that all the later conventions of the church are to be improved and corrected from this one convention. May God grant us into the truth as he did Mary and Elizabeth and Zechariah, John, ultimately the truth being Jesus. God's holy name. Amen. Confess our common Christian faith, answer love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Mighty God, you have done great things for us, looking upon our humble estate and exalting us to be your children for Jesus' sake. Preserve us by your holy word that we might properly fear your name and rejoice in it all our days. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, blessed is the fruit of Mary's womb, for she bore your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns for eternity. Receive our thanks for your gift of children conceived and born among your people today. Bring these little ones from the womb safely and quickly to the waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, you are the creator of all life. Have mercy on those women who are unable to conceive or who suffer the heartbreak of miscarriage. Be their rock against despair. Provide them consolation and purpose in your Son and restore them to exult in your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God and worthy judge, from you proceeds the spirit of wisdom and understanding counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Give wisdom to those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they may serve faithfully in their tasks according to your good pleasure and for the benefit of our people. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, you exalt those of humble estate and fill the hungry with good things. Grant that the sick, the homebound, the immobile, the lonely, the depressed, the ill, the dying, and all others who have been brought low may be delivered from their afflictions and encouraged by your gospel. We especially remember before you today those we now name in our hearts. In all things and at all times, may they magnify your name and give thanks for your loving care. 
Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, give us joy that as surely as your Son was conceived in the Blessed Mary at your word, so he comes to abide in us also at your word in the Blessed Sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, you have done great things for us, delivering us from death to life through Christ our Lord. Mercifully hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. For the sake of your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May greet one another with the peace of Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For by the Holy Spirit, your only begotten Son was conceived in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary and brought forth in the substance of our human flesh that we might partake of his divine life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saving. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, 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 God in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, God in the Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take.
let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.